to start, go ahead and remove all these push clips that hold this whole plastic piece on. You want to remove the center first and then the whole thing comes out. With all the push clips out, you can remove this plastic panel. Just to get more room here, I'm going to take this cover off with two 10 millimeter nuts. Flip it up and you can set it aside. What this is going to do is allow me to pull this fan shroud back more, otherwise it would hit the cover right about here. To make draining easier, this it'll make it go faster. Remove your radiator cap. Now let's slide underneath and start draining the radiator. You don't have to remove this shield, but I will just because it will decrease the potential for a mess when draining the coolant. Right in here, there's a 12 millimeter bolt. Go ahead and remove that. There's another 12 millimeter bolt right in here. Remove that one too and hold the shield. Now you can let it drop down and unhook it from the front, slide it forward. There we go. Right over here you can see the pet cock. I'm going to use some pliers because most likely it's a little bit stuck. Twist it counterclockwise. That's going to release this screw here and uh, don't take it all the way out because it's going to start shooting coolant straight back but remove it enough to where coolant starts coming out of here. There we go. Perfect. I'm just going to leave it like that and wait for it to finish draining. Now with the coolant drain I can remove the thermostat housing. You don't have to do this but I will do it just for access purposes so I can get to things better. Remove these three 10 millimeter bolts. With all these three out, I'm gonna wiggle this and remove the thermostat housing with the thermostat. And I'm just gonna set this aside so it's out of my way. I'm going to remove these four 12 millimeter nuts next and I'm using a long wrench. Somehow, I think because someone else has been in here and did not make these very tight, I can break them free. Usually what happens is you go to turn it and this whole thing just keeps spinning. What you can do is either use two wrenches, hold one on one nut and loosen another, or if you have room and large enough locking pliers, you can lock them onto this shaft, hold it, and then use your wrench. For me, like I said, these are coming right off, thankfully, so I'm just gonna break them all free and then remove them all the way. Get this last one off. And at this point, there's nothing holding this fan in anymore. So make sure it doesn't fall. Now I'm going to wiggle it and hopefully it breaks free from the uh, pulley here. You can see it's starting to move. Just keep on wiggling. And there we go, off it comes. I'm going to leave it on just like this. And now we're going to remove the fan shroud. With a 10 millimeter, remove this bolt here. Then on the other side, there are two more, one up here, and then one right down below. Okay, with these two removed, the fan shroud can come off. Remove this hose, grab the fan, and pull it up with the fan shroud at the same time. If you just keep wiggling, eventually it'll come off. Basically, you just have to clear the hoses on the side. And now this can come right off. With a 14 millimeter wrench on this bolt for the tensioner, I'm going to pull upwards. That's going to release tension off the belt. Slide the belt off. Remove the belt from all the other pulleys. With a 14 millimeter, I'm going to remove this bolt for the tensioner. Keep in mind, it's reverse thread, so you have to actually tighten to loosen, so turn right. All right, now you can take this off and still with a 14 remove the bolt for the idler pulley. This is not reverse thread. Remove the whole pulley and another idler pulley right here. Remove that one as well. Okay, remove this hose clamp here. Twist the hose to break it free and just remove the hose off of here. Set it aside. I'm going to disconnect the throttle body just so it's out of my way. Take off all these 10 millimeter bolts that hold this thermostat housing on. Basically you want to do that so that we can pull it off of the water pump down there. So they're 
Um, there's one here. They're all the same length bolts, so you don't have to worry about exchanging, or you don't have to worry about mixing them up. There's one underneath. And there's one that you can't really see, but it's right down there. One up top. And lastly, one right underneath. All right. Now with those off, you can wiggle this housing off and a lot of coolant will come out, but now it's uh, away from the water pump. Go ahead and take off all the 10 and 12 millimeter bolts that hold the water pump on. Okay, these two, these three here are 12s. Then I'll switch to a 10 millimeter. These were all, all three of these were the same length, so don't worry about mixing them up. These are 10s. Okay, this, some of them on this side are also 12 millimeter. And another one down here, that's a 12 as well. Go ahead and remove this last one. And coolant is just gonna keep coming down. Now you can gently wiggle the water pump out of the way, or off of the block. Make sure that this clears the tensioner. Pull it down. And as you pull it down, twist it and turn it, and the gasket will separate. Here's your old water pump. Remove that. Remove your old gasket. And now let's get the surface cleaned and ready for the new water pump. You'll notice with your new water pump come these studs here. These have to be reinstalled so that the fan can bolt up to something. So I'm going to thread them on. It has a longer thread area and then a shorter one. The shorter one goes into the bracket or the shorter one goes into the water pump. And after I put them all in, you can either to put two nuts here, snug them up and drive it down or use a set of locking pliers and uh, clamp it right down at the base here and twist it into place. Okay, so you can take some locking pliers, lock them on, and just twist it. You don't have to go crazy tight on this and if you want to you can put some thread locker on. Basically you want to make sure they're as tight as you can get them so that they don't back out by themselves. But also when you install the nuts on this side, it'll pull the threads out and snug them up even more. All right, that's it. Let's install the water pump. So with a razor blade, I gently cleaned the surface. It was actually pretty cleaned. I just wanted to scrape off any debris that was still on there. And then I wiped it down with a rag to remove any coolant that was still stuck there take the gasket and basically can only go on one way. There's no way to accidentally put it on backwards because it won't fit. Line up the water pump. You're gonna have to slide it underneath this piece here. So lift that up. Make sure that you put your new gasket up on here. It should come with your water pump. This piece you can pull on it because it's just held on by some hoses. So they're flexible. Once you clear everything, there's there's a lot that's going to be in your way, but once you clear everything, start in some of your bolts. Just whatever lines up first, just so it can be held into place. At this point, I'm just going to go around, start all of them, and uh, make sure they all line up. It can be tricky to line them up, especially if the gasket keeps moving on you. So, But the, the good thing is the more bolts you put in, the better it lines up, so you'll have an easier time as you go. Now with all the bolts in, I'm going to bottom them out. I'm going to start from the center and work my way out. I want the gasket, I want the gasket to seat properly. And then I'm going to torque all the 10 millimeter bolts to 80 inch pounds, which results to 6.7 foot pounds. And then all the 12 millimeter bolts get torqued to 17 foot pounds. But I'm going to get them close first. I'm going to start with these two bottom ones. So these 12 millimeter ones get torqued to 17 foot pounds. There's a bolt right up here. And again, the 10 millimeters get torqued to 6.7 foot-pounds. 
I'm just working my way from the center out. I want the gasket to seat properly. Be very careful when you tighten these small ones because they're very fragile and they break easily. Next, I want to put these bolts back in so I can resecure this thermostat housing. There should be five bolts in total. And these three on the bottom and then one that was hidden back here, which is probably the hardest one to get to. All right, let's snug them all up. Gonna reinstall the tensioner pulley. Remember this is reverse thread, so if it looks like you're loosening to tighten, you're doing it right. Reinstall this idler up top here. This one is not reverse thread. And there was one more down here. This one is also not reverse. Let's bottom these out and then torque them. Tighten this one up first. Tighten these. Torque these all to 29 foot-pounds. One's already there. For this one, you'll have to flip to reverse. Oh, and the tensioner is going to activate. Once you bottom out the tensioner part of it, you can torque it. And the last one is this one over here. I'm going to slide on the water pump pulley and I'm actually going to start on two of the nuts just so I can hold it on here otherwise it's going to keep wanting to fall off and flop around. So starting two of these you don't have to make them tight or anything but at least it'll hold it on there for you while you put the belt on and then we'll take them off before the fan goes on. Now take the belt and I'm going to start at the furthest point away from me which is the power steering pump. I'm going to go straight over the water pump. Then I'm going to go underneath this idler and over the alternator. Uh, along the way I'm making sure that it's seating properly on all the ribs. You don't want it to be offset like this so it can, otherwise it'll fall off. Go straight down underneath the AC compressor over this idler down here and then around, oops it's falling off here. And then you want to go around the harmonic balancer or the crank pulley all the way around under the water pump and this is where it gets tricky because you have to slide it over the tensioner. Um, I'm going to start it on this idler first and then start it on this um, and then it has to go under the water pump here and what I'm going to do is get my socket and ratchet ready to go. Okay. Now I'm going to release tension and once I release enough tension, perfect, over the tensioner and now tension it back up. Now that it's sitting on here with tension, you want to double check it, make sure it's not falling off of anywhere. And that looks good, but when the car is ready to run, I'm going to run it for a few seconds and then double check the belt so I can make sure it doesn't actually fall off of anywhere. All right, I'm going to take these two nuts off so I can next put the fan on. Next, I'm going to slide the fan with the fan shroud in. They kind of have to go in together, otherwise they won't fit. And the trickiest part about this is trying to get it past all the hoses. And make sure that you don't hit your radiator in the process. The shroud is pretty much in. And there's actually two hooks on the bottom. If you press it up against the radiator and then slide it down, that just it hooked on. So it's not going to go anywhere. I'm going to reattach the fan to its pulley here. Before it wants to fall off, I'm just going to start in these nuts. I'm not going to tighten them yet. Start in this bolt now with the fan partially secured and now there's two more bolts on the other side start those in as well okay two more bolts on this side put those in and let's snug them all up that's two and while i'm here 
I'm going to reconnect this hose. Perfect. With my ratcheting wrench, I'm just going to snug all these uh, nuts up and then I'll make them as tight as I can. There's no way I can torque this, but uh, at least I'll try my best to make it tight. Now that they're all bottomed out and snug, I'm going to go ahead and tighten them. You'll notice once you get to a certain point, the whole fan is going to start spinning. You can try to hold this pulley and snug it up as tight as you can. They don't have to be crazy tight, but uh, tight enough to where it won't come off. If you want to put thread locker on them, go ahead, but I don't think it's necessary. Next, I'm going to put my thermostat back on. And again, you didn't really need to take this off, but it did make things easier. So I'll put on the three nuts that were holding it on. Put all three of these on. I'm going to snug them up. Snug these up. The torque for this is 6.7 foot pounds or 80 inch pounds. It's going to be really difficult for me to get a torque wrench in here, so I'm just going to make them nice and snug by hand. That should be plenty tight. Reinstall your engine cover, make sure it hooks onto the back there with the two hooks, and then slide it down over the studs. Reinstall the two nuts that hold it on, and snug it up. To fill the cooling system, I have the spill free funnel. Highly recommended because it's very useful. Remove the plunger in the middle and then I'm going to fill it with 50-50 pre-diluted uh, antifreeze. I'm just going to wait for it to stop bubbling, fill it up, and uh, once it does stop bubbling, I'm going to leave it full up to about here and then I'll run the vehicle and burp out all the excess air. Now that it's full, it's stopped bubbling. What I want to do is turn on the engine, turn the heat all the way up. Uh, you don't have to turn the blower high, just on low, but the heat has to be all the way up so the coolant can circulate through the heater core and make sure that the car reaches operating temperature. Watch the temperature gauge to make sure it doesn't overheat. And then once the air bubbles have stopped coming up, you can shut the car off, leave the funnel on and let it cool if you have time. But at that point, once it's all done, you can squeeze the top hose just a little bit plug it up, remove the funnel, and fill your overflow with the rest. If yours isn't full already, mine is, so I'm just going to leave it. Go ahead and put this plastic cover back on, line it up, and then I'm going to put in all of my push clips. I separated them, so I'm putting the outer piece in first, and then you take the center, slide it down, press it all the way, and that's how you lock it in. Go ahead and do that to all the rest. Now reinstall your radiator cap. Put up your shield, it gets hooked onto the front here with the two hooks. You can slide it up, start in your two bolts. That's one. Snug them up. Perfect.